Hello everyone, I'm Yuan Dong Tian from Facebook AI Research. Today, I introduce our recent ICML work, Understanding Self-Supervised Learning Dynamics Without Constructive Pairs. This is a joint work with Xin Lei Chen, also from Facebook AI Research, and Surya Ganguly from Stanford University. In recent years, self-supervised learning learns representation from data augmentation without relying on carefully labeled data sets and has achieved strong empirical performance in many applications, including natural language processing, speech, and computer vision. This circumvents the limitation of expensive data set labeling by human and opens the door of using massive unlabeled data to further improve our existing AI systems. While it is empirically successful, many important questions remain open. As one example, non-contractive self-supervised learning like BYOL and SimCN does not require any negative pairs to learn a good representation. An obvious question follows. Why do they not collapse to trivial solutions in which the network just converges to constant representation and loss function achieves global minima. In this paper, we build a minimum model to study the dynamics of non-contrastive SSL. In this model, two augmented data points, x1 and x2, are first obtained from two data augmentations of the same input x and then send to online network W and a target network WA, whose parameter WA is a moving average version of W. The online part has an extra predictor WP. The final outputs are then compared with L2 loss, and then the gradient flows through the predictor, the online network, but not the target network, which is a trick called stop gradient. For simplicity, our model uses a linear and bias-free online and target network and a, um, and a linear predictor. We do not consider normalization of the outputs right before L2 loss. For such a simple model, its dynamics can be written down in a closed form. Here, x and x prime are two positive semi-definite matrices that represent the covariance of the data and the mean covariance of the augmentation. Surprisingly, with such a simple model, we are able to explain a lot of things, such as why the extra predictor and the stop gradient are needed, why the system does not collapse to trivial solutions during training, and the rules played by multiple hybrid parameters, including relative learning rate of the predictor weight decay and exponential moving average. Finally, based on our analysis, we propose a novel, non-constructive, self-supervised learning algorithm called direct predict that rivals current state-of-art methods on Cypher 10, STR10, and ImageNet. First, we show that without a predictor or stop gradient, non-constructive self-supervised learning would collapse. These two components have been shown to be critical by many empirical studies for non-constructive SSL, but it is not clear why it is the case in principle. From simple algebraic manipulation, we could show that in both situations, the dynamics changes and the network weights W will go to zero and vanish, which means that it will not learn anything. To get further insights about the dynamics, we make the following assumptions. First, we assume that the data distribution and data augmentation distribution are isotrophic. That is, we assume the covariance of the data x is identity matrix, and the covariance of augmentation x prime is isotrophic with variance sigma square. Second, we assume that the EMA weight on the target network points to the same direction as the online weight, 
and differs by only a scalar. The experiments show that it is indeed the case for our simple dynamics that satisfy assumption one. The symmetry assumption is also inspired by the empirical results, which is the third assumption we will make for this analysis. During STL10 training, using a linear predictor, we see that the predictor becomes increasingly symmetric during training. However, if we directly set WP to be symmetric, then without exponential moving average, BYOL does not work anymore. As a result, whether the predictor is a symmetric matrix or not, affects the performance a lot. Both evidences motivate us to bring about assumption three and see what's going on. With all the three assumptions, we now can reduce the train dynamics to the following two equations, where F is the correlation matrix of the predictor input. Note that we replace the dynamics of W with that of F. This is because the correlation matrix F is well-defined even if the network is nonlinear. This will make uh, our change by from a gradient descent algorithm to direct predict much easier. Now we have the following theorem that shows that the eigenspace of the predictor and the correlation matrix F will gradually align if certain condition holds. This theoretical implication is also verified in the empirical study. In STL10, training that uses nonlinear network, which is less than 18, also shows that the eigenspace of F and WP gradually aligns. Here, we detect the eigenspace alignment by checking whether each eigenvector of WP ordered by its corresponding eigenvalues aligns well with that of the correlation matrix F. When the eigenspace aligns, the dynamics can be decoupled into two into 1D scalar case, which makes them much more friendly for analysis. The one-dimensional dynamics involves PJ and SJ, the eigenvalues of the predicted WP, and the correlation matrix F. From the dynamics, we also find a very convenient invariance that connects the dynamics of PJ and SJ together. This invariance is shown as the black parabola in the 2D phase diagram on the right. Now we can see why the non-constructive self far learning does not collapse. To see that, using the invariance, we can get rid of SJ and arrive at the dynamics of the eigenvalue PJ of the predicted WP only. The dynamics has several hybrid parameters. It has this tau that is related to EMA, sigma that is related to the variance due to data augmentation, and the weight decay eta. Since the right-hand side of the dynamics, dynamic equation is a third-order polynomial, we have three stationary points. The stationary points pj equals to zero corresponds to a trivial solution that we want to avoid doing training. Other than that, there are two more stationary points, p star minus and p star plus. If p is initialized to be larger than p star minus, then it fails it, it falls into non-trivial attractive basin and will converge to non-trivial solution p star plus. On the other hand, if p is initialized to be smaller than pj minus, then it will converge to zero. <laughs> this leads to two regions, the trivial basin and the non-trivial basin. If the eigenvalue of wp lies in the trivial basin, it converges to trivial solution, Otherwise, it converts to the non-trivial solution. This is the reason why non-contrastive SSL does not get trapped into trivial solution. From the decoupled dynamics, we can also anal analyze the effects of different hyperparameters. Here, we use the weight decay eta as the first example. When weight decay changes, the size of the trivial basin will also change. A large weight decay leads to a large trivial basin. With strong enough weight decay, the non-trivial attractive basin can even disappear, 
yielding a convergence to trivial solution no matter where the initialization of P is. Since large weighted K can expand the trivial basin, people may wonder what is the benefit of weighted K? The answer is, if the weighted K is high, then the alignment condition is more likely to satisfy. This is shown in the simulation, in particular at the beginning of the dynamics. Therefore, the best way to care is to keep a balance between eigenspace alignment and a reasonably small trivial basin. Similarly, we also study the trade-off of other parameters. For relative learning rate of the predictor alpha p, a large alpha p will shrink the size of trivial basin as well as relaxing the condition of eigenspace alignment. Experiments also show that with large alpha p helps uh, the final performance of downstream tasks, in particular when the weight is symmetric. The negative effect is that if the alpha p is too large, then it will halt the learning process. Even when pj grows quickly, hj does not grow and feature learning does not happen. Similarly, a small beta or smaller exponential moving average rate also have pros and cons. On the positive side, a small beta will relax the condition of eigenspace alignment and makes it, makes it easy to happen. On the negative side, a small beta makes the training slower and will expand the size of a trivial basin. Please check detail in the paper. Given all these analyses, a natural question arises. If we have been trying so hard to make the eigenspace of the predictor WP and the correlation matrix F aligned, why not do this directly? After all, we have the freedom to choose which algorithm to be used to train a network. In this paper, motivated by our theory, we propose direct predict a novel, non-constructive self-supervised learning method by directly setting the linear predictor to be aligned with the eigenspace of the correlation matrix F. The algorithm is very simple. First, we keep an online estimation of the correlation matrix F using exponential moving average. This is possible for nonlinear networks used in practice, such as resident 18 or resident 50. Second, we then perform eigen decomposition of the estimated correlated correlation matrix F hat and obtain its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Finally, we directly set the predictor WP as follows. We set the eigenvalues of WP to follow the invariance discovered in decoupled dynamics plus some regularization. We also set the eigenvectors of WP to be the same as those of the correlation matrix estimated by our running average. Therefore, by construction, it is guaranteed that the predicted WP and F achieves eigenspace alignment. Then the question is, does this approach work in practice? The answer is yes. The newly proposed direct predict does a great job on both STL10 and Cypher10, showing stronger performance than SGD baselines, which update WP using gradient descent. After 100, 300, and 500 epochs of training. Furthermore, if we directly set the linear predictor every five mini batches, and update them with gradient update in between, the performance is a little bit better. For this experiment, we'll use ResNet 18 as the nonlinear network in the uh, training step. On ImageNet, the, result, the resulting downstream classification performance is also better than BYOL with linear predictor and comparable with a two-layer nonlinear predictor in both 60 epoch and 300 epoch setting, in particular in top five accuracy. Note that 
In 300 epoch setting, we also use symmetric loss, loss optimizers, and ResNet50 encoder, which is standard in Valinear BYOL. The two-layer predictor from BYOL has 256 input and output dimensions and 4K hidden dimensions with batch norm and value activations. While in our direct predict approach, the predictor is linear, is a simple matrix of the size uh, 256 by 256 without any hidden dimensions, nonlinearities, and or batch norm. And still, our approach can match the performance created, uh, computed from uh, the standard BYL settings. In summary, we propose a systematic analysis on the dynamics of non-contrastive self-supervised learning methods using a minimal setting of linear weights and linear predictors. We give the underlying reason why we need an extra predictor and stop gradient, why training does not collapse to trivial solutions, and the rules played by different hyperparameters. Based on our analysis, we finally proposed direct predict a novel non-constructive SSR method in each mini batch. Direct predict directly aligns the eigenspace of the predictor WP with the correlation matrix F of the predictor's input. Direct predict shows comparable performance than Valina BYOL in both in, in, in uh, Cypher 10. STL10 and ImageNet. Our code is already open source and we welcome everyone to use. Thanks for your attention.